Discourse 19, December 5th, 1932. Saint Germain, Invocation. Thou majestic presence of the ascended Jesus Christ, thou who hast gained thy eternal dominion over all things, thou who dost rest serene in the heart of the eternal Father, pouring forth thy wondrous radiance, enfolding all mankind, we give praise and thanks to thee. Our hearts fill with great rejoicing at the ascended host with thee see and manipulate the dawning eternal light for the blessing of humanity. Through his own personal ray, Jesus will now speak his wish to the students. The Discourse by Beloved Jesus When I said, I am the open door which no man may shut, I meant humanity to understand. I referred to the great I am which is the life of every individual manifest in form. I did not wish to convey that the personal Jesus was the only one to whom this great privilege was ordained. Each one of you, beloved children of the One Father, has the same mighty presence within you, the Great I Am, that I have, and that I had at that time by which I achieved the final and eternal victory. Here I wish you to understand for encouragement, strength, and certainty in your minds that the consciousness I used for this great victory was the use of the I Am Presence which you are now being taught. I had made search through all the avenues available at the time, and at last a determination desire for the truth led me to the great master whom you shall one day know. He gave to me this inner secret and mighty acknowledgement, turning to me to the mighty presence of the great I Am. Through his radiation, I was able to comprehend and at once began using it. This is the only way by which any individualization of the ray of God may achieve the eternal victory and build his structure upon a firm foundation from which no outer activity can ever disturb him. At this time, I wish to convey the simple, all-powerful use of this presence to you. All who have achieved the mighty victory, who have been able to raise their bodies as I did, or who raised them before, have used the conscious activity of that mighty, eternal presence I am. When I said to my disciples and to humanity, the things that I have done shall ye do also, and either graver things shall ye do, I knew whereof I spoke, knowing that within each individualization or child of God, there was this mighty I am presence, by whose use you are impelled forward with no uncertainty, I say impelled because I mean just that. The constant use of your I am presence does impel you forward in spite of any activity of the outer self, so long as a single idea is held firmly, storms, distress, and disturbances may rage about you, but in the consciousness of the I am presence, you can and are able to stand serene, unmoved by the seething vortex of human creation which may or may not be about you. There is but one way by which you and the Father may become eternally one, and that is through the full acceptance of His I Am Presence, energy, love, wisdom, and power which He has given you, golden links, golden steps, by which you climb serenely upward into your final achievement. Sometime, somewhere, every individualization of God the Father must find His way back to the Father through His I Am Presence, fulfilling his cycle or cycles of individualizations in the use of the activity of the other self. The earth is the only sphere in which there is density of the atomic structure that you experience. The conscious recognition and use of the I Am Presence, which you are, steadily raises the vibratory action of your atomic structure, unclothing and liberating electronic activity which is hidden within the atom, enabling you to become self-luminous beings. I wish it here distinctly understood by all who may receive this or ever contact it, that I am not and never was a special being created of God different from the rest of humanity. It is true that I had made previous conscious effort and had attained much previous to the embodiment which I won the eternal victory. My choice of experience 2,000 years ago was to set the example which every individualization of God would and must sooner or later follow. How I urge you, beloved children of God, to look upon me as your elder brother, one with you. When I said, or left the word that, I am with you always, the I am presence, which I am and which you are, is one. Therefore, do you not see how I am with you always, 
Think deeply on this and try to feel its reality. At the time and after my ascension, I saw the immensity of the radiation I would be able to pour forth to my beloved brothers and sisters upon the earth from the sphere in which I had become fitted to dwell. I wish to say to you in all truth, every individual who will send his conscious thought to me with the desire to be raised above the limitations of earth or of his own creation, and will live accordingly, will receive every assistance from me that is possible to be given, according to the steps of growth and consciousness which he maintains from time to time. Do not misunderstand me at this point. When I refer to growth, I am speaking of humanity in general. I do not refer to some who have previous attainment sufficient which, in their present use and full acceptance of their I am presence, they may rend the veil of human creation and step forth into the embrace of the ascended, blazing I am presence at any time. There are some in the group of students already drawn together for whom it is possible to do this. That depends entirely upon themselves, upon the calm, poised intensity by which they become conscious of their I am presence. These great tidings I bring to you because I have proved them in my own personal experience. Before I become fully decided in what manner I should leave the example of humanity, I suddenly from an inner impulse began to use a statement. I am the resurrection and the life. Within 48 hours after I began using that statement with great rejoicing, I saw what was to be done. And I wish to assure you that it was the conscious use of the mighty statement, I am the resurrection and the life, which enabled me to make the ascension in the presence of so many, and imprint or record upon the etheric records that example for all humanity which will stand eternally present. It was unfortunate that the veil of the orthodox idea was drawn over the minds of people, preventing the comprehension that each one had within himself the I am presence, the same as I did, by which he could attain do the same things I did and win the eternal victory. Such beloved students is my personal message I leave with you, spoken through the light and sound ray into which any of you may enter, see and hear with sufficient conscious preparation. Again I urge to think of me as your elder brother, ready to give you assistance at all times. Do not think of me as a transcendent being so far beyond your reach that contact is impossible, for I am presence which enabled me to make the ascension is the same I am presence that will enable you to make the ascension as I did. Only today you have the assistance of the great ascended host of beings, who have won the eternal victory and joyously stand at your service as you make yourself ready. With my love I enfold you. I again repeat, I am with you always. St. Germain, did I not have a surprise for you? Benediction. Into the fullness of thy mighty silence, O great presence, we come to rest, to feel thy peace, to love thy harmony pervading all. O mighty love presence which beats the hearts of all mankind, strengthen thyself within their hearts, draw and hold their conscious attention upon thee, the great love star in the heart of each one. Glorify thy presence and thy creator in them, bless all mankind with that strength to look only to thee and to stand steadfast facing thee.